Yes, everybody, hope you're all good. Thank you for tuning in to this first uh, tutorial video that I'm putting together. My name's Compa, as I'm sure you already know. I'm here to deconstruct my track, Crack Jimes, which came out on J. Kenzo's label article music about six months ago, 12 months ago or so. Before I get started, I just want to say um, if any of you guys ever want any advice or guidance, you want to know where I get my samples from, what VSTs I'm using, um, anything to do with music production, music in general, feel free to give me a shout. I'm more than happy to jump on Skype with any of you guys uh, if you want me to. Um, yeah, this is the first tutorial that I've ever done from a YouTube channel. Hope it goes well. Might be absolutely shit could be really good, gonna have to wait and see. Um, if you enjoy it, hit the thumbs up button, hit the comment section, let me know why. If you don't enjoy it, again, hit the comment section, let, let me know why, give me some feedback, um, and I'll try and make these better in future. You're gonna have to forgive me on the sound, I've spent the last two hours trying to figure out how to record uh, my microphone for the talking, and also the logic out for good audio quality cannot figure it out, so annoying, um, but you've probably heard this tune before, if you, if you haven't, type in Compo Crack Chimes on YouTube, give it a listen in uh, good audio quality, so you know how it actually sounds. Um, other than that, let's dive in. Right, so all these are the tracks that make up the, well, the track. <laughs> um, each element I've made in this order. So basically I started with the bass, then I did the sub, then I started on the drums, kick, snares, synths, blah blah blah, built it from there. So let's get stuck into the first element that I made which is, let's zoom in, zoom in, solo this bad boy. So this is the little bass bit that I made. <laughs> How did I make this? Right, so I've started with the ES2. Started with a simple sine wave, which is here. Bass settings, sine bass, super simple, super simple starting point. It's come a long way since it was just a basic sine wave, but I'm gonna sh show you exactly how it's kind of gone from the sine wave to, to the bass that it is. So what I've done, this oscillator here, oscillator 2, would have been set down here on sine wave. Obviously, I've moved it up to this wave here. I'm not sure what this is actually called. Um, it's not a square wave, some kind of funky wave. Then I've turned on this oscillator here. This is the important part, really. So this is the wave that I'm using overall. And then I've opened up this oscillator. And in the ES2, in inside Logic, Logic X, which is what we're using here, uh, what you can do is, on this bottom section, obviously you can change this to all the different waves, on this bottom one, you've got a selection of different kind of timbres of waves, so wood, um, you know, glass, sine, obviously, square, pulse, all that stuff. We're using the wood wave, which has given it the the texture that you're hearing which takes it away from just being a cold sine wave kind of thing and then what I've done these are the settings of the channel these are all the bits that I've basically applied to those settings within the ES2 so I've compressed it I've EQ'd it as you can see I've taken the bottom end out I've also EQ'd it down here and added quite a bit of top end extra 20, 20 dB of top end which well I'll show you what this is doing basically if I turn this off and play the wave it just sounds whack there's no top end um, it's never going to cut through the mix really simple way to fix that turn on the EQ boost the top end you know makes complete sense doesn't it so the rest of these channel settings wise we've added phase distortion Again, a fairly simple plugin to be honest. I use this quite a bit um, because, well, I mean, if I turn it off, it's not kind of got that crunchy kind of movement 
to to the to the wave which is what this uh, phase distortion basically gives it you know it kind of adds a phase to the sound it adds some movement to the sound just makes it sound fucking sick really to be honest um, bit crusher again if we if we take this off take the bit crusher off take the phase distortion off sounds a lot different and all we've done is basically added phase distortion which has given it that kind of crunch and the the movement and then we've added a bit crusher which gives it a bit more well it kind of adds white noise almost to the sound which kind of you know again it boosts that top end so it cuts through the mix sounds a little bit crispier fairly simple stuff um, added a little bit of reverb to give it that tail give it that atmosphere kind of kind of this so, I mean come on if we take this off dry spreader uh, if you don't know what a spreader does it basically um, takes it out of the stereo field slightly um, so it's not kind of just straight down the middle mono this tool in logic yeah it just gives it a bit more stereo basically and just uh, makes it sound less square and down the middle um, overdrive wise a little bit more distortion if we take this off see how it sounds yeah this just beefs it up really I've only added what four almost 5 dB of this just kind of uh, brings it up in um, volume ever so slightly brings it up in texture clip distortion again like the phase distortion this what this does is um, it kind of widens the sound slightly gives it a little bit more tone um, just kind of expands the sound really EQ we've already talked about boosted that top end tremolo if you don't know what this does um, it moves the sound across the stereo field again really I mean in so the spreader if you're wondering well what's the difference between a spreader and a tremolo a spreader kind of brings the sound backwards in the in, in the stereo field whereas a tremolo just moves it from from side to side pretty extreme settings um, but they work for the sound as you can hear it's moving you know 65% so it's not it's not going like extreme side to side it's just kind of um, it's giving it movement giving it movement really that's that's the whole point so that's the bass So mid and low. Yeah, so what I've done is I've made a sub, which is literally just, uh, again, it's a sine wave. And I've separated them so I've got the low part of the frequency, the upper part of the frequency. Let's have a look at the EQ real quick. Yep, yeah, so this top part. I've cut up at 95, the bottom part I've only cut down at yep, 25, so this has got that really low end in it, this has got more of the top in it. The mid, what have I done to it? Compressed it very slightly, EQ'd it like I just showed you, overdrive, again to kind of beef it up a bit, and a limiter, yeah pretty simple stuff, so it's just a sine wave with a little bit of distortion to give it texture and then I've split it in two into the low frequency and the high and the reason that I've done that is because so sometimes if I was playing this entire track and I didn't have this upper mid part of the bass and it was a sine wave yeah you'd hear it in a club you'd hear it on a sound system you'd hear it on good monitors but on not so good monitors maybe an iPod headphones or something you wouldn't hear that low end so that's why I've given it 
the uh, this upper upper mid part because you can turn this up, which allows people to hear the bass more. But you're not turning that low frequency up, which is going to muddy up the entire mix. Basically, that's that's why I've split them. These bits underneath, exactly the same as uh, above, but they've got release on, like it says. Pretty simple stuff. So the sound rolls out. Reverse part. That's just like a, a lead into to where the bass starts. Again, pretty simple stuff. It's exactly the same as these up here, apart from obviously it hasn't got any low end because I don't want low end to, to roll into the to the sub. So that's what I started with. I started with bass and low end bass. Then I've started to build drums, kick. Let's solo this little bit here. So we've got something to look at. So basically, I've made all these drums myself already. So all I've done here is pretty much drag and drop for this pattern. Um, and you can get all of these drum sounds in the, the producer pack, sample pack. Um, that I put out last year. Google um, Compra Producer Pack and you can grab most of these sounds actually. You can grab the bass, grab the drums, grab the chimes. Um, yeah, so grab, grab the sample pack if you want these sounds. But really simple stuff, kick and I literally haven't, there's no processing on this at all. Literally just dragged in. Snare, all I've done is add a little bit of reverb little bit of uh, distortion and EQ'd it. Super simple. Um, I've separated the channels to add another one which has got less reverb. Basically the reason that I do this is because I hate um, doing loads of automation because it gets super fiddly and it's really easy to get confused about what you've done um, and where mistakes are happening and stuff so I just make new channels. Yep, so you can hear what I've done there. I've got a snare that's got reverb on it, and I've got a snare that's got pretty much... In fact, it hasn't got any. I've turned the fucking reverb off. So, wet snare, dry snare. And then I've got these snappy bits underneath, which... This one is slightly leaning left. This one is slightly leaning right, to give it a little bit of a... Again, give the track some uh, stereo movement. And another trick that I learned um, that is, is, is sick actually is putting a really, really short um, reverse before your, before your snares collapse, whatever. Um, I think I learned this off a guy called Icicle who makes drum and bass, um, who said to me that it's, it's kind of barely noticeable when the track is all playing, but it gives your snares um, a bit more pop Like I say, you can barely hear it, but if I just play it on its own, can you hear that? Really, really, really short little uh, reverse part. And all I've done is literally bounce the snare, um, reverse the snare, it's really simple, and again, put a spreader on it, which just brings it backwards in the, uh, the stereo field slightly. Easy. The chimes, which is probably the main part of this track, um, came next. So let's solo these, see how they sound. In fact, I'll just solo the one first, this channel here. Yep, simple stuff. So this sound is, again, I've made it in the ES2. So, if you use um, Logic, then you will probably already know that you can go on tutorial settings down here, 
and you can choose analog sort in it and what that does it kind of wipes um, the ES2 settings so you can start from fresh and kind of make your own sound which is what I've done here and all I've done is use this oscillator here set it to the uh, FM wave use this oscillator here and like we did with the bass I've selected one of these waves down here which is the Bell 8 wave I think it sounds more like a chime which is why I called it a fucking chime uh, yeah and then again a little bit of compression chorus to uh, give the sound some movement you know no fancy um, VSTs here literally just logic inbuilt VSTs uh, EQ is a little bit wild looks a little bit wild I've, I've definitely gone in on that EQ maybe uh, a bit too much but it sounds like it works uh, space designer to give it some um, to give the sound some atmosphere uh, spreader to give it a little bit of uh, bring it back in the stereo field tremolo to give it a little bit of movement again so basically what I've done I've, I've uh, removed the the low end from the sound to give room to well the kick the sub so on and so forth those lower frequency sounds um, underneath I've got this channel which just leads in into the drop you know it was simple stuff simple stuff um, just like I what I've done to make that is I've literally bounced one of these notes so I've got that drawn that in bounced that section put it into the track reversed it simple simple and then chime to what's this sounding yep so what I've done so basically um, I'll have made this chime up here which is what I've just played to you which is the main you know lead of the track but it doesn't really fill out the track enough um, or I, I obviously didn't think so at the time so what I've done I've replicated this channel which is this here and literally all I've done is on the uh, ES2 I've detuned it using where is it this bad boy here so I've basically taken the main chime sound and to kind of give it some balance I've just replicated it detuned this and you can barely hear it but when you play it all together it's just kind of got that extra texture underneath the uh, sound basically it basically fills out the track you know that's what it does it just fills those extra frequency parts you know that, that make the track sound a little bit more complete basically next I've added the crashes really simple stuff so I've just got a reverse crash leading into a main crash this crash is one that I recorded um, when I was doing a band session a couple of years ago this was literally just like the drummer hitting the crash that I pulled out of the recording um, so it's a live live crash of mine I think this is in the producer pack sample pack as well if you want to get your hands on this grab the uh, Google Compo producer pack and uh, you can grab that it's got pretty much all these sounds in that I've used including the chime, the drums, whatever, downlifter um, all I've done, a little bit of reverb to give it some space EQ'd it, taken out the bottom end taken out a little bit of the top so it's not interfering with the hats um, and the top of the uh, chimes next I've just added this down lifter which basically you know adds to the atmosphere um, I haven't done anything to that, no processing whatsoever. Um, siren that I made.
again really simple stuff just kind of um, leads into the drop and uh, what I did to make this I recorded um, a police siren and then time stretched uh, one of one part of that recording and um, added a tremolo EQ'd it slightly um, yeah that's that's how I, I made that sound I think that's in the producer pack as well atmosphere yep yeah, so the atmosphere is a stereo well it's, it's, it's a field recording of just Manchester City Centre that I recorded one day which I use in probably about eight out of ten of my tracks that's always underneath the track because what it does if you ever have a, a quiet part of your track it just adds to the, uh, the frequency field and makes the track sound a little bit less uh, empty basically that's that's the reason I use that hats again this is just a hat I made um, no barely any processing literally a little bit of, of uh, spreader to give it to bring it back in the stereo field it, obviously standard EQ take out the uh, the bottom end of it um, I've added this pattern so basically I've done the same as I did with the uh, snares and just taken one to the left taken one to the right to uh, you know make the track less less mono pretty simple stuff add in the open hat uh, this is not my open hat this is from a what's where is this from trap beat 62 I've either sampled that out of someone else's tune or it's out of a sample pack, not gonna lie. Pretty simple stuff. Add this to the let's let's play all the drums together so you can see how it sounds. Kicks, snares. Yep, yeah, cool. And probably my favourite part of this track that I ended up adding, recording my brother um, just using a lighter. Just, uh, you know, I, I don't think I've ever heard a lighter flick in a track before, so I thought that was pretty <laughs> a pretty original idea. I'm not sure whether you guys agree. Maybe you've he heard that in track before. Don't know. Um, but yeah, literally that's just a recording. I think I did that on my phone. EQ'd it to take out some of the bottom end because um, for when you record on your phone or with a shit microphone or something, you get a lot of noise on the bottom end. So it's best to um, take that out to kind of protect the uh, frequency frequency range. Um, bit of reverb to give it um, some atmosphere. Obviously, it's not going to work if it's dry. I'm going to play it dry. That's useless. Play it wet. And there you go, that's pretty much it. I think I've covered every element there. Um, so I'm going to talk about arrangement really, really quickly. Obviously, um, strip down intro, that starts just with the, the atmosphere and the chimes and the, uh, the lighter. And I've used this uh, reverse crash to lead into this kind of little intro bit. And then obviously, you know, the bass comes in. I've used these uh, sub parts with the release that kind of stretch across this little bit. And then you've got the chime reversed bit and the sub reverse bit that lead into this drop section here. And 
then the only other bit that I haven't talked about yet is um, where are you? Where are you? This bit. So basically, towards the end of the first kind of section of the track, I strip the the chime out, and then I've just made this extra channel, which is just an EQ section. <laughs> which I'm basically just EQing this back in. Pretty simple stuff. So that's it. Bass, sub, some drums, the chime, a um, little bit of atmosphere. Uh, like I say, if you want to grab these samples, just check out the uh, the producer pack sample pack that I recently made. Um, you can pretty much get most of these sounds. There's like 110 different sounds in there: bass, drums, atmosphere stuff that that you can use in your own productions, and you won't need to do much um, processing on the sounds because I've already compressed them, EQ'd them, so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Like I said in the beginning, if you enjoyed it, uh, hit the thumbs up, hit the comments section, let me know what you what you liked. Alternatively, if you didn't like it, you know, hit the comments section um, and give me feedback, you know, because I'll if you want me to do another one of these, I will. Let me know if there's any tracks in particular that you want me to uh, to do this on and I'll get to that for you guys. Um, other than that, yeah, hope you enjoyed it and uh, thanks for watching.